Hi everyone! In this video, I'll be trying out the full range of Windsor & Newton's Artist Grade watercolors. I actually received this from a very, very super uber kind viewer. So thank you so much! But I feel like I'm being so spoiled, you guys! However, I'm doing this for you. So let's get into it. All right, first up is lemon yellow made with nickel titanate, made with PY53. So you're gonna see that I wrote the pigments down on the sides for you if you're interested. It's not in your face, just tilt your head a little. <laughs> Anyways, so you're gonna see that I wrote PY53 with a G next to it. So this dot chart actually does denote which ones are granulating with a G. However, I looked online on their website and some of them are granulating or some of, some of them are labeled granulating on their website. So I wrote that on the side as well. Anyways, um, for the PY53, I have that in the Schminke in a mixing video. So if you're interested in that, I'll link that below. Next up, we have bismuth yellow made with PY184. Standard lemon yellow, nothing much to say. Cadmium lemon yellow, pretty opaque, but it's, it's your nice lemon yellow. Then the cadmium free lemon. I have nothing to say with this one. I mean, it pretty much looks exactly like cadmium lemon. So who would use it? I don't know, do, do any of you guys use it? I'd really love to know. I mean, probably for environmental reasons, right? And then we have Windsor Lemon, which is PY175. This one is also a great lemon yellow option. I believe they use this pigment in their Cotman range as well. And now we have the Windsor Yellow made with PY154. I believe that's Benzimidazolone Yellow. And I'd say this marks the start of the middle yellows. All right, next up, Lemon Yellow Deep. This one is very interesting. It's made with PY159, and it doesn't say it's granulating here, but the website does say it's granulating. I'm looking at the swatch right now, and it does, because it's a yellow on a white piece of paper, it's a bit difficult to say whether it's um, granulating or not. However, it's the same pigment as Schminke's Volcano Yellow, which is in their super granulating, super granulation range. Next is Areolin, Areolin, Aurelin, PY40. And then we have Transparent Yellow made with PY150, which is Nickel Azo Yellow. Love this color probably one of my staples. And then cadmium yellow pale. This cadmium yellow pale, I would say, is like a middle yellow where we'll be seeing cadmium yellow coming up later. And that one starts to become more of a warm cadmium yellow, if you know what I mean. Cadmium free yellow pale, same thing. Looks to be a bit more transparent than the cadmium yellow pale. And then we have Turner's Yellow made with PY216. I wrote an asterisk asterisks on this color because apparently White Knights has the same pigment. So I'm interested to try that. If you're also interested to try this, but you know, you're not sure if you want to invest right away, maybe White Knights is for you. New Gamboge looks very similar to, what do you call it? Rembrandt's gamboge color where it's sort of like a quin gold but a lighter version between a quin gold and uh, Nicolazzo yellow. All right, then we have cadmium yellow. Like I said, this one starts to lean more towards a warm yellow instead, instead of a middle yellow. Then we have the cadmium free yellow, pretty similar, nothing much. Uh, Windsor yellow deep made with PY65. These are all becoming more warm yellows or yellow oranges. Next, Indian yellow, P062 and PY139. I'd say this is a pretty orange color. It's, it's more orange in real life than on screen here. 
cadmium yellow deep, PR108, PY35, and cadmium free yellow deep. Both are pretty opaque, I'd say. And then we have the last one here, cadmium orange, PR108 and PY35. Same thing, I think this one's, yeah, you could definitely say that this marks the start of the oranges. Next up, we have the cadmium free orange. I, I'd like to say this one is much more vibrant than the cadmium orange previously. So if, if that's what you're looking for, maybe try this one out. And then we have Windsor Orange P062. This one's rather transparent compared to the one previous, compared to the previous one. Um, and then we have Transparent Orange, which I, I can't tell what the pigment is. It just says DPP on their website. Does anyone know what the pigment for this one is? It looks to be like a P071, but I'm not sure. The next one, the one next to it is P073 Windsor Orange Red Shade. And I'd say this would mark the beginning of the warm reds. So those orange leaning reds. Okay, we have Cadmium Scarlet made with PR108. This, this one is just a cadmium color, pretty opaque, nothing much. The Cadmium Free Scarlet seems to be more warm than the Cadmium Scarlet. So if you like the Cadmium Scarlet but want a Cadmium Free version, just keep in mind that the Cadmium Free version seems to be a tad bit more warm. Um, then we have Scarlet Lake made with PR188. Cadmium Red made with PR108. Now. For this one, this cadmium red, on their website it says it's granulating, but this chart only says it's staining but doesn't say granulating. So we'll put a pin in that. And then we have the cadmium red, uh, sorry, cadmium free red. And this one I'd say also is also slightly more vibrant than the, the normal cadmium red. Then we have cadmium red deep, PR108. This one, the website also says granulating. So the cadmium red and cadmium red deep seems to both be granulating. And I'm wondering if it would be like volcano red in Schmincke's range. Now we have cadmium free red deep, pretty similar to the cadmium red deep. So nothing much to say about that. Um, Windsor red, I'd say, this is definitely a fire truck red made with P made with PR254. Next we have Rose Dore made with PV19 and PY97. I think they're trying to recreate like the red rose color. I don't know. I feel like when I swatched this out it feels very much like a lip tint to me <laughs> for women out there, if you know what I mean. It's like one of those lip balms with a red tint. <laughs> Next up, we have Quinacridone Red PR209. This one is actually one of my favorite pigments. Love it. It's that reddy pinky color, but also has an orange in it. Beautiful. Windsor Red Deep made with PR264. This one, I'd say we're entering the dark red territory, like the cool reds, you know? All right, this one is so, so beautiful, very luscious. Next up, Permanent Alizarin Crimson made with PR206. This one seems to be slightly cooler than the Windsor Red Deep, but a very beautiful crimson. And then we have Alizarin Crimson, which is their genuine pigment, PR83. And next to that is Permanent Carmine, which has no pigment information, so we don't know. But I'd say they recreated that pretty similarly. Like, 
All of these three options, permanent alizarin crimson, alizarin crimson, and permanent carmine look all pretty similar. I don't know. Do any of you guys see the difference? Or if any of you use these colors, is there something particular about each one that makes you use one over the other? All right, this one is permanent rose made with PV19. Basically, your normal standard quinacridone rose. Then we have rose matter genuine NR9. So this is a natural pigment and their website says it's granulating. I think I seem to remember a viewer comment in my previous video that they really like this color and you know what it reminds me of rhodonite genuine by daniel smith and it's it's definitely a beautiful color i i definitely agree okay next up we have opera rose their website says just pr122 but we all know there's a fluorescence in there right next we have crinacridone magenta pr122 this is one of my favorite favorite colors probably my second favorite from thalo turquoise um nothing much to say this is strong tinting standard pr122 next is permanent magenta made with pv19 and this is the violet version of the this pigment pv19 normally people would think the quinacridone rose color or the redder version of quinacridone rose but i'd say this this is pretty blue and if you mix this with ultramarine blue or any blues it gives you a really really beautiful violet next is cobalt violet made with pv14 this one's granulating as the chart clearly says if you're looking for a vegan option for this color exact same hue granulation check out Rembrandt. I think it's pretty cheap for the 20 mil tubes. I have it and I love it. Next up is permanent mauve. Mauve? I'm sorry, I don't know how to say this word. <laughs> Anyways, it's made with PV16 and is granulating. When I swatched it out right away, I felt like, hey, this looks really similar to a manganese violet. And so I looked to the side and it's made with PV16. So I'm like, hey, is it a manganese violet? It looks a bit, it looks a tad red for a manganese violet. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your shopping. Then we have quinacridone violet made with PV55. Strong tinting, nothing much to say about this one. Very beautiful transparent color. And then ultramarine violet made with PV15. This one I feel like tends to, um, it's definitely very easy to re-wet for a ultramarine violet and rather pigmented, but I feel like it's also a bit more blue leading than your normal typical standard ultramarine violets. And then Windsor Violet Dioxazine made with PV23. Nothing much to say about that. Standard performing dioxazine violet. Then we have Indanthrene Blue made with PB60 love this color i have a half pan of this and i've been using it in my current palette which is the western palette and then we have cobalt blue deep made with pb74 i've never tried pb74 before so this is my first time and i gotta say i'm really loving it i mean i'm not seeing much of a difference between it and an ultramarine violet but again this watch is pretty small and so can't really compare much to it. It might be cooler than your normal ultramarine, but it's definitely a lovely color. However, if an ultramarine is like, you know, cheaper and this one is more expensive, I'd still go for the ultramarine blue. And now we have French ultramarine made with PB29. I'm going to skip Dumont's blue smalt for a bit and then skip to ultramarine green shade. So they they both seem to be granulating, um, the French ultramarine more so, and between the two, I think French ultramarine, they're the same hue, but French ultramarine seems to be more vibrant, if that makes sense. 
Okay, and then we have smalt blue, smalt or Dumont blue, as I previously said. This one definitely is much more warm, um, which means it, it leans red and it's made with PV15. Then we have cobalt blue made with PB28, granulating, but this one, I'm not seeing much of a granulation, I don't think, but that might just be because of the paper. And then we have Windsor blue red shade, which is your typical phthalo blue red shade. Nothing much to say about this one, pretty standard, pretty intense. And these next two are made with PB27, the Antwerp blue and the Prussian blue. Normally in one range of watercolor, there is only one PB27, which is the Prussian blue. However, between these two, I'd say the difference, the main difference between these two is that the Antwerp blue seems to be a lower tinting. It's definitely it's definitely not a low tinting color, but the Prussian blue seems to be higher tinting as you could see there. I tried to dig out the pigment to see how much it would come out. And the Prussian blue almost gives you a dark black, whereas the Antwerp blue didn't. And then we have Windsor blue green shade made with PB15, which is your typical phthalo blue green shade. The next two colors here are both cerulean blue. The first one is red shade and the other one just says cerulean blue. However, when I first swatched this out, I could clearly tell right away that the cerulean blue red shade is the same hue as Holbein's cerulean blue. And that's because I have Holbein's and I use it pretty often. However, their cerulean blue, this Windsor & Newton cerulean blue right here, is more of White Knight's hue. So depending on which one you like, buy the one you want. <laughs> and now we have manganese blue hue made with PB15. I'm pretty sure they, they don't say it, there's a white in there, so maybe they used an, an opaque filler of sorts. And then we have Thalo turquoise made with PB16. This one isn't as green as Holbein's, but it's definitely my second favorite Thalo turquoise in terms of brands. And then we have Aqua Green, which is a Thalo color. They don't tell you the pigment, just that it's Thalo, but this one, I really, I love my turquoises. You know that, and this is like that tad bit more green than Thalo turquoise. And it says it's granulating, but because this is a tiny swatch, I can't really tell. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be buying this one in the future. Next is Cobalt Turquoise Light, made with PG50, which is your typical cobalt teal, cobalt turquoise, you know. And the next one is Cobalt Turquoise, made with PB28 and PB36. With this color, Windsor & Newton used to have it as a single pigment, but I think somehow they changed it and made it a double pigment. Don't know what happened there, but the color is just as beautiful, your typical cobalt turquoise. And the next one is Cobalt Green Deep, PG26. This is a very nice cobalt green deep color compared to the one next to it, which is Cobalt Green made with PG50. This one is very similar to Roman Small's Cobalt Green Light, where it's a middle green that's granulating and rather opaque. Next is Windsor Green Blue Shade PG7, which is your typical phthalo green blue shade. Viridian. I made a drop and then I'll come back to it later. Windsor Green Yellow Shade, your typical phthalo green yellow shade. Nothing much to say about that. Super strong tinting, just like the Windsor Green Blue Shade. And here's Viridian. I'm not sure if this is because it's a small sample, small dot, but it was very difficult to re-wet and very low tinting. Of course, Viridian is low tinting, but the fact that it's also very hard to re-wet just makes it impossible. And now we have Terra Verte, which is a very low tinting pigment, very hard to re-wet as you could see here. It's made with PB28, PG18, and PG23. 
Now I don't know why they had to use so many colors because I have one made with Roman small PG23 which is a green earth and it looks very much like this color but much easier to re-wet and it's single pigment. And then we have Perylene Green made with PBK31. It's very beautiful. It's I can definitely tell that it's green, not a black. Whereas I feel like some other brands, when you swatch out Perylene Green, it looks more of, of a black with a green undertone. But this one just feels like a green that's very, very dark. Oxide of Chromium made with PG17, granulating and staining. Then we have Hooker's Green made with PG36 and PY110. Pretty middle green, nothing much to say. Permanent Sap Green is next, made with PG36, PY110. I'm really loving Windsor & Newton's Permanent Sap Green. I feel like it's it's the perfect sap green for me, somehow. If, if we're talking just generally sap green, because you know I like my Serpentine Genuine, but if we're just gonna talk about a normal sap green, this one has to be it. Then we have Olive Green made with PB15, colon 6, PR101, and PY65. You know, your mossy, olive green. And now we have Terra Verte Yellow Shade, oh, PG23. So they do have a single pigment option and it's much more yellow than the previous Terra Verte. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> and now we have Green Gold, PY129. Um, I normally refer to it as azomethine green yellow, but green gold is fine. Naples yellow, PBR24 and PW6. Seems like a Caucasian skin color. And then we have a Naples yellow deep, PBR24. More of a tanner Caucasian skin color. And then we have yellow ochre light made with PY43. This one says it's granulating on the website. Um, I really don't recommend this as it's really hard to re-wet. It might just be because it's an earth pigment and usually earth pigments are rather thirsty. And we have a yellow ochre next to it. Mm, this one's a bit more orange compared to the one before. So depending on which kind of yellow ochre you like, yellow leaning or orange leaning, you can pick between the two. And then we have raw sienna granulating made with PR101 and PY42. Gold ochre made with PY42. This one, definitely beautiful. I wish it was granulating. I really love the color. It's, it's much more orange, but it still has that earthiness to it. And then we have quin gold hue since it's not genuine Quinn Gold. PR206, PV19, and PY150. That's very interesting that they chose to use PV19 as well, but I do like the color. I love it in mass tone, and when it's diluted, it's, it looks good, it looks good. And then we have brown ochre made with PBR7, and this one, the website does say it's granulating. Again, seems a bit hard to re-wet, but Maybe if I had dropped some water on it and let it soak for a bit, it might have done better. And we have Magnesium Brown made with PY119 granulating. Lovely, this one reminds me of Aquarius Brown made with PBR11 from Roman Small's range. And then we have Burnt Sienna made with PR101. If you go back and take a look at my Burnt Sienna comparison video, I sort of figured out that this Burnt Sienna, Windsor & Newton's Burnt Sienna, is more of a transparent red oxide. It, it does make sense because they use a PR101 and also their range does not contain transparent red oxide, which is very, very interesting. So do go check out my Burnt Sienna comparison video if you're interested. I'll link that below. Then we have Light Red made with PR102. It's not as opaque as, as I would imagine light reds to be because light red oxides are usually more opaque, aren't they? Like this Venetian Red, very opaque, made with PR101. 
typical Venetian red. And then we have the Indian red made with PR101 as well. Opaque, lovely, very pigmented, solid performing Indian red. Nothing much to say. Brown Matter made with PR206. So they did use this, this color, this pigment in their Quin Gold Hue. And I think I can understand why because it's similar to a quinacridone burnt orange, PO48. So it makes sense. I would agree. Then we have Potter's Pink made with PR233. I love Windsor & Newton's version as well because it granulates much more than Roman Small's version. PR179 Perlene Maroon. Lovely reddish brown color. Has quite the drying shift. I'm interested to know if any one of you use Perlene Maroon in your palette and what do you use it for? Like, do you use it as a red red? You know, like to replace Alizarin Crimson or do you use it more of a burnt sienna brown red? That'd be interesting to know. And Perlene Violet. PV29. I actually love Windsor & Newton's version of this because once it dries, I actually feel like I could see the violet in there. Whereas White Knight's version I have of PV29 feels more flat. Then we have Kaput Mortem Violet PR101. Their website does say it's granulating and even with this small swatch, I can tell that it is granulating. Beautiful color, pretty sort of two-tony. If you like Kaput Mortems, I think you'll like this one. Then we have Raw Umber made with PBR7, granulating as well from their website. And I love this color. Rembrandt used to have Raw Umber in this color, but then they discontinued it. I don't know why. So this will be my new go-to Raw Umber. I mean, I don't have it, I haven't bought it yet, but this is the Raw Umber that I've always loved from Rembrandt. So yeah, I'm happy about that. Then we have Burnt Umber made with PBR, PBR7, PR101, and PY42 granulating. Van Dyke Brown PBK6, PR101. And then we have Sapia, PBK6, and PR101. Pretty typical. Not sure why they had to use multiple pigments, but hopefully they'll revamp their range and make them into single pigments soon. What I've noticed in Windsor & Newton's watercolor dot card here is that they put all these blues, blacks, and grays together so it's much more easier to compare and I love that about them so thank you very much Windsor & Newton. So indigo, you could see the pigments there. There's indigo, Payne's gray, neutral tint, ivory black, lamp black, Mars black, and Davies gray. So between all of these, I'd say indigo, you could tell that it's blue and Payne's gray is definitely a bluer gray, not neutral at all. And then we have neutral tint, which does look pretty neutral to me. And ivory black leans more warm than cool. Lamp black feels a bit more neutral than the ivory black. And then we have Mars Black made with PBK11 that is granulating and opaque. And then Davies Gray, pretty hard to re-wet green gray, very light, very low tinting. And we have Chinese White, PW4, and Titanium White, PW6. Um, they didn't come with a black line, so I drew that on there myself. And you could definitely, definitely tell that the opaque white is definitely more opaque. And also the, the titanium white does seem cooler in hue, in temperature, than the Chinese white. And that's it everyone. So right after this, I'll be showing you close-ups of the dried swatches, completely dried swatches in daylight, as well as the scanned versions of these after this. So do stay and watch for those if you want. Well, this is a very long video. So thank you so much everyone for sticking with me to the end. Thank you so much for watching such a long video today. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.